Hi, my name is Jeremy Sutton, and I'm going to be your guide to the Van Gogh brush pack, especially for your use in Corel Painter and in Painter Essentials. So in terms of your preparation for following along the tutorial, what I'd like you to do is to go to a local flower shop and get yourselves your own sunflowers. I'm going to lead you through step by step how I would use brushes that I've put into this Vincent van Gogh brush pack to create a painting inspired by the techniques and approach of Vincent van Gogh. I'll give you the choice of either creating the painting from direct observation or if you prefer you could take a photograph of these flowers and then we can use that photograph as a reference or you could do a mixture of both. So I encourage you to use this as a launching pad for your own creativity and to express your own individual style and approach even when inspired by such a great master artist such as Vincent van Gogh. Okay, let's dive in and have some fun. I'm in Corel Painter 2018 and I've arranged my layout of the user interface with the things that I want to access be visible. We have the tools on the left. I've got access to my brushes concentrated in the top left corner and you'll see that I have the brush selector here which I've also placed as an independent panel here and you can do that by going to Window, Brush Selector Panel. I've moved the Van Gogh Brush Pack to the top of the category list, and you do that literally just by grabbing the icon there and moving it around. And you'll see here in the right-hand column that I have 15 brush variants for the Van Gogh Brush Pack. And if you're using Painter Essentials 6, that will be 10 brush variants from that list. I've got a photo art draw positioned here. If you don't see that on your desktop, then you just go to palette drawers. I have my papers draw here. We have at the top here a brush property bar and advanced brush controls. And then in the top right corner, I've got my colors and layers. So you'll see here that I have my color wheel and value saturation triangle. That's my main way of picking color when I'm painting. There's a color variability panel uh, also that can be quite useful, especially when it comes to uh, Van Gogh style artwork. One color panel that I've dragged out of here and placed down here is the mixer panel. You can open up any JPEG by going to open mixer pad. And then next to that, we have the reference image panel. And this is accessible through window reference image. You can use that little icon in the bottom left to open any image. But if you just want to pick colors, you just tap and pick them. And at the very bottom, we have a custom palette called JS Handy Shortcuts. This is part of my Paintbox TV workspace. And here's a Jeremy Faves that comes with that workspace, paintboxTV.com. It is a subscription-based website. When you've laid out your own palettes in a way that's going to work for you, I recommend you just go to Window, Layout, Save Layout, and give your layout a meaningful name. So let's open up a new canvas to paint on. File New, or Command N on a Mac, or Control N on a PC. And we're going to change pixels to inches and we're going to make it 28 inches width and 36 inches height and let's make that at 150 pixels per inch that's going to give us a fair number of pixels to paint with we could print at that actual size and still get a pretty decent print if we wanted and that size that i've chosen here is approximately the size of these actual Van Gogh paintings. We're going to start off using the canvas chalk course and that texture actually it's based on an old Turner canvas. In terms of color choice warm neutral like this. Cover the entire canvas in these broad brush strokes. My goal here is to ensure that my surface that I'm painting on has an irregularity which gives it a much more natural feel. The texture you saw there appears when you use the default which is called basic paper and one that can give an interesting result is called artist canvas. In the papers panel increase the scale on this one and you can see that we start to get a scale in my case 
that's maybe more appropriate for the scale of paper that I'm using here is a self-portrait by Van Gogh. But what you can see here showing through in the back of his canvas, so to speak, that he's depicted is the texture of the canvas he's actually using. And it's quite a rough canvas and in fact, this sort of reminds me of it a little bit. You try taking a photograph of your sunflower arrangement somewhat at a similar angle to these arrangements that you see that Van Gogh used. I'm going to open up a photograph of the arrangement I was using. I am going to just do a select all. That's Command A on a Mac, Control A on a PC. I'm going to copy Command C on a Mac, Control C on a PC. And then I'm going to paste that onto this uh, working image. And I'll do Command V on a Mac, Control V on a PC. To resize a layer in Painter, you have a couple of different ways to do that. You can go to Edit, Free Transform, in which case you would just pull the control handles, rescale it, and then press the return key to commit the transform and then carry on. Or you can convert it to reference layer where you have more flexibility and for instance you can adjust the opacity of the layer as you're experimenting with the scale. And so for that reason I'm going to choose convert to reference layer. And you'll notice that the little symbol next to the layer has now changed to indicate it is in fact a reference layer not an image layer. Now we have the reference layer in place, we can convert it to a default layer just by going to the pop-up menu in the layers panel and that is accessed through the top right corner menu symbol there. What we're going to do now is go to the clone source panel and again this is in the photo art draw clone source panel. We're going to go to the embed source image icon. It's actually a little picture of a floppy disk in the bottom left corner of the clone source panel. I'm going to tap on it and select the image that has the check mark by it, which is the currently active image. And what that does is it makes this image that's in front of us a clone source for this canvas and we'll see how that applies in a moment but the first thing we're going to do once we see that that is now listed in the clone source panel is we're going to check the clone source image checkbox here we go and what you'll see is we now have two images the painting image or what will be the painting image and the source image it actually says source image in the title bar to make things a bit clearer as I reposition these, I'm going to press the tab key, which hides shows uh, toggles between hiding and showing the user interface. Tab, tab, tab. So we're going to hide the user interface, and we're just going to move the source image to the left. Here we go, and keep it somewhat smaller. I use the space bar to move it around. Then I tap on the larger painting image and keep that on the right. Press the tab key again, bring back the user interface, delete that layer. And I'll just tap on the delete layer trash can icon in the bottom right of the layers panel to do that. So we now have a clear differentiation between our reference image, which is our clone source, and our painting image on the right. And I just want to show you here, it's a very important function, is that in the clone source panel, you can turn on and off tracing paper. And in the clone source panel, you can use the opacity slider to control when you have a tracing paper turned on, how much of that image you see showing through. I'm going to use the canvas chalk dents to rough out my composition. Not worry about the edges of the sunflowers yet. There we go. And let's turn off tracing paper just to see what we have. I'm going to make the size of this brush smaller. So I can do that with this slider up here. I can also do it with the keyboard shortcut, which is very handy. 
which is on a Mac, Option and Command held down at the same time, which allows you to drag like this. So I can now make a mark that looks like this. I'm on a PC, that would be Alt and Control. Let's turn on Tracing Paper. And you might find it useful working with layers here, so I'm going to create a new layer by tapping on the new layer icon in the layers panel and then in that new layer I'm just going to roughly map out let's make that a bit darker here roughly map out the shape of vase that I want to work with based loosely on the Van Gogh type of vase I'm going to loosely map out my leaf and petal structure just keep loose and have fun with this, not get too concerned about getting things right. There is, there is no right and wrong here, there's just having fun as you do it. Let's turn off the tracing paper. Now we have an outline, I'd like you to go to the canvas, create a new layer, and pick the dry wispy brush. And we're going to just quickly work up the structure of the vase before we head into the flowers and uh, it's up to you here what you do you could uh, work with your own set of colors you could follow uh, the colors that you see Van Gogh using um, what you'll notice is because I'm creating a layer underneath the outline layer and by the way you can if you want if you find it easier double click on layer one which is where we put the outline and put outline and double click on layer 2 which we just created and call it vase or vase and here we go and what you'll notice is that if you look carefully at at least the right hand of these two Van, Van Goghs um, there's actually a little bit of tonal structure with a bit more light uh, color there and it's again just up to you and you might just want to look at your own bars and sort of follow what you see and then we've got more of the putty color on the bottom section be a bit more neutral and let's just go to the thick weave bristle I'm just working in with this brush just giving a little bit of different texture there we go and if we make this a little bit bigger so I'm going to use that shortcut command option on a Mac control all on a PC and I'm going to pick using uh, option on a Mac alt on a PC pick that color there we're going to go for the blendy bristles what's interesting is Van Gogh's approach here is that he adopted a fairly flat perspective um, reminiscent of the Japanese art which he was very very taken by he was a collector of Japanese prints and here I'm using the multiple color dabber that works with the multiple color sampler in the mixer pad and the nice thing about having created this background in the first place is it doesn't matter if bits of it show through in fact it's much more interesting when bits of it show through so we're going to create a new layer again we're going to go to the layers panel and click on the new layer icon you can see it highlighted here at the bottom of the layers panel in the lower right of the screen I tap on that and I get a new layer appearing and in this case I'm going to start working on the flowers so I double tapped on the actual layer that appeared and I'll write flowers and even though you know the vase layer actually has some background elements as well and you can see the little icon it's, sometimes it's useful to have these labels on your layers okay so let's dive in with the flowers layer and see what happens what's really nice about this narrow stripy brush as I zoom in let's just zoom in here it's pressure sensitive so when I want a thinner stroke I can just press lighter when I want a thicker stroke I press heavier and it has variation in hue saturation and value across the width of the stroke and if we just go for a moment and have another look at the details of the brush strokes in this self-portrait you can actually see examples where 
He's got these multiple colors. And we can go in and pick color from any of these references that I have down here just by clicking in the image. So we have lots of choices and it's nice to actually get a bit of variety of color going on. I think it adds a lot of interest. You can just turn that off. So we'll go from narrow, stripy to oily bristle, a brush that actually works with the sample multiple colors as well. So you can use this brush to get a variety of colors across the width of the brush stroke. And another option here, if you want to actually pick up some color from your source image, and remember that what we see down here is the source image. There it is up here. And we can just click on this clone color icon in the colors panel, in the color and layers drawer up here on the right. And when we do that, you'll notice that the hue ring and the value saturation triangle are grayed out. And then when we actually use the brush stroke within the image, what you'll see, there's a crosshair on the source image. And as I go into the ye yellow of the sunflower petals, I'm picking up that yellow on the brush stroke. And I encourage you to really experiment as much as you can and try out all these different ways of putting color in. Of course, you can turn off that clone color anytime and just start adding your own color. One other way that you can use the clone color is actually just as a means of mapping out your basic composition. And keeping on the flowers layer, we're going to go to the Oily Intense Brush. And this is a brush which also uses the sample multiple colors. And we're going to start working with some of the greenery now. I'm also going to increase the size of the region by this slider here called Change Brush Size, which the in the color mixer panel, which determines the region at which these multiple colors are picked from. So let's start with this uh, area here where we've got some red, we've got some yellow, and we've got some green. I'm going to just tap in there. As you can see, we get these wonderful mix of colors. And you'll notice the difference here. When I do clone color, it's picking color here, but it's tending to be a bit more uniform color within the stroke. And when I uncheck the clone color and instead go and use the sample multiple colors, then I get uh, much more diversity of color across the brush stroke, which can be a bit more interesting. And let's have a look at the blobby paint. After all, that's got some interesting sort of blobbiness. So we'll pick a color so roughly in that region. There we go. Maybe use that. Maybe take down the hue variation a bit so it tends to keep with somewhat within the same colors there. And we're going to do a bit of clumpy. I then went and experimented with the oily bristly brush, the oily intense brush, and the oily pencil. I started to introduce a flower that actually was based on looking at this flower here. As we do this, you see the outline is above that flower. I generated a new layer above the outline. I did that by selecting the outline, going to the new layer, tap, create new layer. This is where I ended up. And I picked the oily bristle brush. Now I have this sunflower version of Van Gogh in my mixer pad. I'm using the sample multiple colors. And when I tap on the sample multiple color with this darker area close to the top, I get this wonderful sort of textured look and then I can vary that as I go down. And I did the same on the other side. And I can also do this in the vase itself. The final thing I did here was work with the fine liner and the fine liner I used to do both do the outline here and also for the signature at the end. So now it's time for you to have some fun painting your own 
Vincent van Gogh inspired flowers and I'd love to see what you create with these brushes. So feel free to email me at jpeg, jeremy at jeremysutton.com. Can't wait to see what you do. All the best and have fun. Happy painting. Mm -hmm.